Hi there, welcome to the Love Fly Fear of Flying Q&A. My name is Paul Tizard. Um, welcome. This is a live stream on, uh, in, in, to, at the moment, it's on the Love Fly Facebook group. It's also going to be streamed to the YouTube channel of ours, which is called Love Fly Team, uh, which will be recorded and sent, uploaded a little bit later. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in. <laughs> Right phrase. So we're going to be talking about a few questions that have come up in the um, various communities that we look after. So thank you very much for posting those. I'll get to those shortly. I just want to first of all say a huge welcome to all our new members that are following us. So we've got quite a few people have signed up into the uh, Instagram, uh, which is Love Fly Help, and we've also got some new followers in the Love Fly private Facebook group, which is uh, I think we've increased by nearly 100 people in the week. It's just amazing. So uh, welcome to all of you. So thank you. And please keep joining all the different things that we do because the, the more people that follow us, so if you're following us on YouTube, it encourages us to put to upload more on YouTube as well. And also if you're in our Facebook group and you get a chance to ask questions directly with us and to join various things like this. So Thank you. And to all those that recommend us, uh, welcome to the huge community that's growing. So um, I just wanted to say things that are coming up. So as some of you know, we've got the face-to-face -face course running in Manchester in just over a month's time. That's the 13th of April. We've got one place left. Woohoo! So that's going to be uh, sold out shortly, which is fantastic. And we're going to be running that. We have, I haven't personally run face-to-face -face courses that aren't webinars since June 2018 when I used to run the Virgin Flower Without Fear program with some people that are also part of this group as well. And one of the things that we always found with the face-to-face -face course is it gives people a chance to really ask things and with the speakers that are here all the time. And it's it's just a great opportunity to, for the community to, to properly be in a room together and, uh, and get to know each other. So this course is gonna be nice and small. But the ones in the past used to be anything up to 200 people in a room with a flight at the end of it. And who knows, might do that again one day. But at the moment, we're enjoying working lots of different ways, like the Love Fly podcast, the uh, Love Fly Instagram, which is Love Fly Help, like I said, and then the YouTube. Tube, YouTube. <laughs> I can't speak. Thank God it's not live. Oh, it is. Crap. Uh, the YouTube link, which is Love Fly Team. So... Lots of ways that you can connect with us and really encourage you to do that. One of the things which you've noticed is really great at the moment is how popular the uh, Love Fly podcast is and just blows our mind how many people are listening to that. So uh, please check that out because it's a fantastic resource and it's free, you know, so it's great people like yourselves coming on sharing their stories of what they've done to beat their own fear of flying or to overcome their fear of flying as a minimum, but also lots of industry experts. And uh, we've got some fantastic people coming up that we'll tell you about shortly. Now, um, so a couple of other things which have been very popular lately. We've noticed that there's been a, a spike in the 30-day program. So thank you for those of you who are on that. It's nice to see so many people going through at the same time. And uh, it's just such a great, uh, yeah, it's a great feeling to think that all these people that we probably won't meet are somewhere in the world listening to our, our uh, online content. So that's fabulous. And the other thing is the webinar the instant downloadable webinar which you keep for life and that's uh, was recorded live in fact it's a, a an amalgam of three different love fly webinars that we took some of the best bits and shoved it into one video it's about two and a half three hours long and it's pretty much a course everything you could ever need to ask i would imagine is going to be covered in there so there's a pilot bit there's a cabin crew bit and there's some psychological tips as well so there's some really good stuff in there. And that also, interestingly, is the, is the free uh, pre-work that people who come on the face-to-face -face workshops get. And it gives you a chance then to be better prepared for when you turn up and join us on the 13th of April or the subsequent courses that we run. So, at the moment, it's just got a few questions that have come in. And if obviously I'll keep an eye on the the place where I offered it earlier on to uh, see if any other questions come in but there's quite a few which is great 
So thank you for posting these. I'll go through them. So Deirdre said, I would love tips on worrying about the flight, about not worrying about the flight home once you've done the flight there. I was so proud of myself for getting there and the flight there wasn't a difficult flight for me, but always had this nagging itch about having to turn around and do it again. Uh, yes, so a lot of people have this. So I'd like you to know that you're in very good company, Deirdre, because most people would say that they they can they prepare themselves really well for the flight out, and then they kind of go, "God, that was all right. That was I'm 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 amazing. I've I've conquered this thing. I'm I'm fearless." And uh, and then they get into their holiday and they go, "Oh crap, I've got to go back again," and then they worry because they're not worrying. This sound familiar? So they worry because they haven't worried. And then they think, well, what about the flight back? I haven't thought about that. And now if it is, is there something, you know, oh, and then they get themselves in a right, you know, uh, tiz about it. So what I want to say is that the, the flight going back is just the same as the flight going out. It's the same safety. It's the same sort of, all the same, everything's the same in terms of the preparation. Nothing's changed. The only thing that's changed is your mindset. So when you think about it, most people, when they prepare for a flight, they, they're so, such an organized state that they think, oh, I, you know, I've just got to, I've done this. And then if they're preparing to help themselves overcome their fear of flying, they've done lots of work around that as well. Now, on the way back, they're a bit more, they, got, they get stressed, but they've had a bit, they may have had some time to sort of relax a bit. And I think the combination of things can happen. Uh, one is that they don't think about the flight and then suddenly they think, oh, crap, it's tomorrow. What am I going to do? And I've got to suddenly fly now and I haven't done like three months of preparation. So you still have. You've just had a week off, that's all. Um, or they or they literally land and then they worry about the way home all the way there. And, that's, and so what I want to say is that if there's any tips is that eventually you won't be like that. But for a while, you might notice that, you know, you do have a little bit of anxiety and it does increase. For example, we always say this, and I've said this before in the audio book, that a lot of complaints, we receive more complaints on the way back from people's holidays than we do on the way out, you know, because people are tired, a bit cranky, they don't come home or they're in a different time zone now. They're, you know, there's just, there's so many factors that sort of feed into it that it just does make the experience a little bit more. Oh. So my tip would be, you don't have to do a crazy amount of prep, but maybe just check, just take a couple of favorite podcasts or, you know, fear of flying books or whatever you've used to help you with your fear of flying. Just check in on them, not massive amount, but just like a little, little tickle each day, you know, like I'll just have a quick listen to this or I'll just remind myself of that. And then just trust that, you know, you've done enough. You've done enough prep. You know, nothing's changed just because you've had a week's gap. Nothing's changed for that return journey. Do you know what I mean? So hopefully that helps a bit. But I just want you to know you're normal. And a lot of people have said this before. So, but it, eventually it will go. You know, eventually it will just start to sort of dissipate, you know. Uh, June. Hello, June. June, you're joining us in Manchester, aren't you? So after pre previous post on here, I just want reassurances. Planes can't just nosedive in the sky. OK, so this was linked to something that was posted and it's been in the news as well. And unfortunately, the way that the media reports stuff is quite shocking sometimes because when you base what's happened on a passenger's perspective no disrespect but when we're passengers we're not fitted with altimeters and I like I've said this before we don't actually know what's happened so if you encounter some moderate or unexpected severe turbulence for literally a matter of a couple of seconds the aircraft is going to move and it might jerk slightly and to us inside it feels a lot worse now you only have to do this if you go on a train and you're walking down the train and the train is on rails, remember, but it's going at, you know, it's ways about the same as an aircraft, okay, typically. But you're only going about 100 and something miles an hour only uh, compared to, you know, four or 500 miles an hour up there. And still you can be unstable and you can topple and nothing's happening. You're on like a flat surface and yet it's enough to make you kind of stumble and that's the same in the air as well, you know, so if it doesn't take much for you to just sleep and if anybody is up and about or hasn't got the seatbelt on anything like a little bit of a wobble in the aircraft happens, 
then you're going to feel like you, it's much worse than it is because you have no set you have you can't assess how much we've shifted and if it was a shock to you then the natural reaction might be that you let out a noise like you know or you swear or um but what can happen is if you're a nervous flyer it becomes ex exaggerated and so when people report when whenever i've heard someone talk about an incident they've happened on an aircraft they nearly always say everybody screamed and everyone was praying and everybody but actually if you think about it where you're sat you can't see everybody so your perspective on what everybody's doing is is limited to the few people around you and i mean that with the utmost respect because people have got quite angry when i've challenged this before but it is the truth your perception is your reality it's not the reality and it's not what's actually going on with the aircraft and so whilst it might have shocked you and it might have been unexpected and it might have been unpleasant and all those other things you're safe and when people report their perspectives in the media it's presented like it's true and so if there is anything untoward that happens, it always gets investigated and it's always subject to public knowledge. So nothing gets hidden. It's always shared. And as I've been, I've had confirmed time and time again, talking to people on the podcast, when I talk to like senior leaders, I talk to pilots, I talk to air traffic. It's an open book system. We, everybody shares. It's not about different, you know, competitively you can compare things. You know, you might have a, like a price but when it comes to safety knowledge, it's shared. And a lot of the airlines are signed up with IATO, who, you know, are a big part of, you know, we, we are big friends with quite a few people there now. And uh, I've known Johnny Jasper, who's in this uh, in the Facebook group as well for many years. And he sometimes jump, jumps onto here. Now, all these airlines sign up to the IATO standards. So information shared, um, you know, regulations are shared, all of these things, it's just, it's completely open. So if there's anything untoward that's happened, it'll be investigated and the findings are shared. If there's anything needs to be changed, it'll be changed. So it's I just want you to reassure that regardless of what was in the media, and again, I can't say much more about it because I wasn't on it, but I would say that uh, I wouldn't worry about it. If you've got your seatbelt on and you're on the flight, you're all right. Now, occasionally, if you get up and go to the loo or walk about and stuff, and there was an unexpected bit of turbulence. Well, it's unexpected. And what can you do about that? You know, it's just one of those things. It's extremely, extremely rare. But it wouldn't, it shouldn't stop you walking about. It shouldn't stop you thinking about the flights being safe because they are. Bit of a ramble there. Sorry about that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Right. The noise of the musical interlude. Uh, Rebecca says, I'm flying this week. Only a short flight. But which are the best ways to alleviate, alleviate anticipation and anxiety and also the cruise anxiety, expecting the worst? Okay, so it's interesting. We've got, uh, we've got um, you know, the two people that wrote the Overcoming anx anticipatory, anticipatory Anxiety. I interviewed them on the podcast because John managed to get them. They were great. Right, and their podcast is coming out is it this week or next week. It's it's coming out in a couple of weeks. John will put comments below because he always does. Uh, but that one will he'll they'll both be talking. That's Martin and Sally will be talking about anticipatory anxiety. They've written a few books around this, you know, and uh, so there's some tips in there. What I want to say is that all anxiety is anticipatory because in in the moment you're not anxious. You're just having you're dealing with whatever's going on. So everything before it is you sort of just allowing your brain to run crazy thoughts because we build these images in our head and we believe them to be true. And our brain, when we're imagining stuff, can't di differentiate. So if you close your eyes, you imagine yourself doing something, you can trick your body into feeling the same things as if you it was real, you know, and that's how a lot of athletes and people like that and F1 drivers can visualize doing their turns and all the rest of it even if they're not actually at the wheels and it's just as effective training you know because it helps them to sort of practice doing things well and so that's the difference with well, anticipatory anxiety is that you're practicing how to things will go badly because what we always do is we over overestimate what will happen to us and underestimate our resources and so 
when we think about anticipatory anxiety, that's that's everybody has that. But the reality is that once you get into the moment of the flight, then you're dealing with, right, okay, now I'm feeling fearful. What am I fearful of? Or am I imagining stuff? So the straight answer is it's never too late to start doing something different. So between now and flying this week, okay, so why not start doing some visualization of it going well? And if you want a little bit of assistance with that, episode 44 on the Love Fly podcast is a little bit of a mini practice of some breathing and visualization. And it's just, it just could be enough to give you that bit of extra help. But the thing is, you can play that on your flight as well. And I know a lot of people listen to that. Um, so whatever you find helpful, people use Headspace app. And uh, like if you're going with Virgin, for example, they have their own relaxation channel on board. And some airlines have that, some don't. But, you know, so do whatever it is that you find that will help you do that. The other thing that I would say is that when you're on board the aircraft, sitting there doing nothing is not helpful. So as a minimum, get the Pete Higgins flight checklist, which is available in various places you can get it from the love fly facebook group uh, if you can't find it on there then you can always email us and we'll email you a copy of it because that is a fantastic tool to help you chunk up your time whilst you're flying and then when you treat it like a checklist you can go through and go oh yeah done that done that done that okay so that is a minimum that i would say you can start doing between now and then it's just have those to have episode 44 of the podcast and the flight checklist and then you've got something to do and the third thing i say is do some of your structure hunger okay so in other words when you are up there and you are in a cruise for example when would you ever just sit and have unstructured time like that so chunk the time up you know and this is another pete higgins tip that he says in his podcast episode it's like have a plan think about how I could chunk my time up and then that gives you some sort of purpose you know like so one to two hours is the meal is the drink the next two hours or maybe I'll go for a walk and then I'll do a bit of reading and then the next couple of hours I'll do this. so it starts thinking about that so it's just chunking it up most things can be broken down into units of time and then it makes it much more manageable to think about what actually am I dealing with here so that's all the questions I've seen. I'm just going to have a quick look to see if there's anything come through. Um, nope, I can't see anything else that's come through. So if there are other questions, you can always, um, if you want to get them proper answers, come onto the Love Fly Facebook group and ask those questions. I'm saying that I know some of you are already in the Facebook group. Some of you will be watching this on YouTube or maybe a little snippet of it on Instagram. So do, come and join us in the Facebook group. It's a private group. Uh, once you're in, provided that uh, you don't sort of post um, weird stuff that people just don't know what to do with, we're always happy to help you, you know, and that's, that's what we like doing. But having said that, most of the time, by the time the Love Fly lot get on there to go and answer it there's already an amazing community that swooped in and answered your questions so there's a lot of support there for you so uh thank you again for watching that and the new podcast episode will be out on wednesday and uh, we will look forward to speaking to you then and in the meantime don't believe everything you see in the media well in fact believe a tiny bit of it because most of it's nonsense and if you ever have any questions at all that you want to ask, stick them in the Love Fly Facebook group and we will do our best to answer you. Take care. See you soon.